Former New Orleans Saints quarterback Drew Brees is going to be in the house, and I think Spencer Rattler is going to be looking to impress him. And Sean Payton is bringing Bo Nix to New Orleans to try to make everybody jealous. You are locked on NFL Crossover, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. What's going on, everybody, and welcome into this Locked On Broncos, Locked On Saints crossover Thursday edition. We are your hosts, Sarah Benger at Sarah Benger over on your favorite social media, and of course, co host with Cody Rourke over at Locked On Broncos. You can find every single Monday through Friday breaking down the Broncos. Myself, Ross Jackson, the lone host over at Locked On Saints at Ross Jackson Nola on your favorite social media, breaking down the New Orleans Saints every Monday through Friday. And we are joining forces in the crossover to end all crossovers. <laughs> for the New Orleans Saints and Denver Broncos going at it for Thursday night football on this episode. We're going to dive into what each team needs to do to get things to get a win. Uh, it's going to lead everything off there when it comes to pressure, which either makes diamonds or creates mistakes. We'll dive into that. We're also going to take a look at some game changing injuries on each of these defenses and leading it all off with the rookie quarterbacks and young offenses that are set to impress in prime time. We appreciate you very much as always for being here and for making us your first listen and for being an every day or here on the shows, which are a part of locked on podcast network, your team every day. And this crossover Thursday, as well as all of our crossover Thursdays brought to you by our friends over at prize picks, download the prize picks app and use that promo code locked on NFL to get $50 instantly. When you play your first $5 lineup, Sarah, uh, this one all comes down to the rookie quarterbacks, man. This is and the young offenses all of a sudden. Yeah, this is the rookie quarterback matchup I think everybody's been waiting for. Forget next weekend, right, with <laughs> Jaden cares? Daniels and Caleb Williams. This is the one that everybody <laughs> wants to see. I know it. I'm sure of it. But I'm excited for it because, look, I mean, Broncos country, very much uh, everybody's got an opinion about Bo Nix, and it's all on the extreme side. Nobody's being overly patient because Broncos country, Ross, has never – I mean, we've never really experienced the team developing after drafting a quarterback like Jay Cutler. Yeah. He was kicked out of there when Josh McDaniels came in. And so it, it's really never happened. It's always been the retread guys. And so this is another opportunity for him to come out there and impress. And it just so happens to be in the place where Sean Payton had all of his <laughs> success as a head coach with Drew Brees in the house of all people. Right, man. Yeah, it's going to be a very emotional matchup. And as you know, the New Orleans Saints with Sean Payton, the very same not really a, a team that has drafted and developed quarterbacks it was always the free agent it was drew Brees. it was teddy bridgewater it was Jameis winston the only uh quarterback that sean payton really developed here from you know a, a rookie status situation was Taysom hill he didn't even develop him as a quarterback developed him as literally everything else over on the offensive side so it, it's it's it, a wildly we were talking about kind of how the stars aligned in this one right like uh, before we started recording, Drew Brees being in the house, Sean Payton returning to New Orleans, rookie quarterback on one side, rookie quarterback on the other side, Sean Payton's former defensive coordinator, the head coach here in New Orleans. Like all of these pieces have aligned for what should be a very exciting matchup. So let's keep rolling on the, the, the young offenses and the rookie quarterback side of it. Tell us a little bit about how this all happened for Denver, the young offense, what you're expecting from it. Like, like what's kind of the big story around that young offense, right? Well, I think Sean Payton is really just kind of committed to the cause in a way. When you talk about going with <laughs> yeah. the youth movement, it's really you've seen it at just about every position group on the offensive line, starting with obviously the quarterback and Bo Nix. But I think we'll see this week, we'll see it extend to the running back position where Sean Payton said deliberately after the game on Sunday, right after the Chargers lost, he's like, I want to see more estimate. He's talking about the fifth round pick out of Notre Dame, mm. who should get some run out of the backfield. Devon Vele, seventh round pick that nobody had ever heard of going into the NFL draft. He led the team in receiving last week and Troy Franklin caught his first touchdown pass. So it's really an exciting time when you talk about a youth movement, you talk about guys kind of showing themselves and proving themselves. And I think this game against New Orleans is kind of a fun situation where Sean is going to get to go out there and kind of show the New Orleans fan base, you know, all of his, it's like a show and tell, you know, for him with all right. these new toys that he's gotten. So we'll see how it ends up. But that's hopefully the plan going forward is that this team really sticks to that youth movement. 
Yeah, yeah. I, I think that there's some elements of that uh, for New Orleans, too. The thing that I'm so interested about for Sean, by the way, is what is it like standing on the other sideline? Yeah. He's never been there. Like, he's never stood yeah. on that sideline during a game, and he thought that was so interested in what that's going to be like. But I, I, the, the Saints are kind of in a similar situation, though Though the difference is that they, they're kind of having their hand forced into this youth movement. Uh, but they probably won't stick with the youth movement, right? Because it's a lot of injury stuff. Chris Olave, Rashid Shahid, the top two wide receivers for the team, out for this week. Derek Carr, of course, he's listed as doubtful on the injury report. He ain't playing. He's he's out. Um, then you've got you know young, you've got youth that you know, on your offensive line already with uh, the rookie starting left tackle, and then you have a right tackle who is over there for the first time in his career, so on and so forth. So like you have all of this youth as well over in New Orleans, but it's kind of come out of necessity in a way. But the thing that I'm looking at, kind of how they're going to get a look at sort of the the young running backs over in or the young running back over in Denver here in New Orleans you're looking at Bub Means and you're looking at uh, Mason Tipton two rookie wide receivers one of which drafted the fifth round the other undrafted coming out of Yale respectively Bub Means the fifth round out of Pittsburgh and then uh, Mason Tipton being the Yale UDFA uh, and those are the two guys that are going to kind of be the field stretchers the deep threats the filling the role that Wide receiver Rashid Shahid has filled pretty much most of the year as the big home run hitter. Uh, he might he's out indefinitely at the moment. Nobody knows until after he gets a, a meniscus surgery done in Los Angeles. So the Saints doing the same thing. And then, of course, Spencer Rattler, right? Spencer Rattler versus Bo Nix. Like that's kind of going to be the other headline in this one, aside from the return home for Sean Payton and the uh, Saints Hall of Fame induction at halftime for Drew Brees. Yeah, and I know that Sean Payton really, really liked Spencer yeah. Rattler in the pre-draft process, and he had some complimentary things to say about him early in the week this week as in the lead up to this game, obviously. But I, I, I know we can't go back and redo everything, but I do believe that if if Sean had not got Bo Nix in the first round, I think he would have taken Spencer Rattler mm. on day two if he had gotten the chance. The Broncos really did like him a lot and thought highly of him just in, in what he showed in that pre-draft interview. So, And I think Spencer thought it went really well as well. I remember writing a couple articles at the time of he was like, man, I really felt good about my meeting with the Broncos, felt like they really liked me, things like that. So it's going to be a fascinating matchup from that vantage point. Two guys, this, uh, I believe the first primetime game for both of these young mm -hmm. players that they're starting in as well so you get under the lights you get a short week in the nfl yeah. you know, bo nix mentioned that he's never played on a short week like this so yep. it's going to be fascinating from so many different vantage points i wouldn't be shocked everybody out there in broncos country i think expected to be perfect each week wouldn't be shocked if it's a little sloppy out there ross oh yeah oh yeah dude it's going to be a sloppy game like <laughs> when you've got two rookie quarterbacks it's going to be sloppy but that's okay like the biggest thing around those guys in particular is are they a little bit better than they were the week before and i think that's where both of these defenses have to present uh, the appropriate challenges, right? Spencer Rattler really uh, struggled under pressure last week, 33.3% completion percentage, 19.7 or 19.8. I can't remember which one, sorry, but just over 19 in terms of his passer rating. So not great under pressure, but look, that's part of what this is going to be right now. When you got rookie quarterbacks going, I assume uh, Bo Nix has had the things that he's been really, really solid at and the things that he struggled with as well. Absolutely. I think a lot of people are wondering, like, is he going to be able to kind of have that quicker trigger like we saw at mm -hmm. Oregon? Or is he going to continue to hold on to the ball and or maybe look to scramble at first? Because he's kind of had that instinct in him to, you know, if if the first read's not there, kind of get a little happy feet in the pocket, maybe not have the best mechanics with the footwork and things like that. So that's something that Broncos country is really looking forward to seeing is Bo trusting his eyes out there, trusting that receivers that they're scheming open, that they're going to come open and that he can throw them open as well. So uh, it, it's not always about that first or second even read. It's it's all yeah. about making sure you go through the progressions and you know looking off the safeties, all those little things that everybody, you know, we micro analyze things at times, but they are those things that, man, they could ultimately be the thing that helps him grow to be the player that I know Sean Payton believes he can be. Yeah, absolutely. You see something very similar with Spencer Rattler. Some of the best plays that he made last week were when the play broke down, the fourth, fifth read, right? The second route being run by those, those pass catchers. And that's going to be big, I think, for both of these guys because it's going to come down to the challenges that they're presented by the a defense that's lining up across from them. But there are some game-changing injuries on both of these defenses. So let's take a look at what the defenses are going to look to do coming up next year as we continue on with this Locked On Broncos, Locked On Saints crossover Thursday, part of Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. 
Today's episode is brought to you by our friends over at Arena Club. Now, listen, I just kind of got into card trading and card collecting and things like that. Now I'm getting into the sports collections. I got a couple uh, sitting up here in my background behind me and stuff like that. I absolutely love uh, being able to head over to Arena Club to kind of get introduced to all this stuff. And one of the things that I love right now is their Arena Club slab pack drops. They are Awesome. Uh, gives you an opportunity to basically, they're revolutionizing the repack game uh, with a lot of transparency. I mean, Arena Club uh, is grading. Their grading process is super accurate. They're transparent. They give a full grade on everything. So whether you're buying, selling, or displaying, Arena Club is the card collecting platform that you have to go and check out. Right now, you can get 10% off of your first slab pack or card purchase by going to arenaclub.com slash locked on NFL and using promo code locked on NFL. That's arenaclub.com slash locked on NFL for 10% off of your first purchase today's episode brought to you by friends as well over at game time uh game time is my absolute favorite place to go to pick up tickets whether i'm planning months in advance or moments in advance and let me tell you a little secret uh i'm very much a moments in advance kind of guy i'm very spontaneous uh, i'm not very fiscally responsible and so that's why i love me some game time because they sure make it look like it right now game time with their zone deals $30 to get some tickets to go to this game. It's a primetime game between the Saints and the Broncos. Sean Payton coming back to New Orleans. Big storyline. Uh, Drew Brees being inducted into the Saints Hall of Fame. Huge story as well. You can be a part of that for 30 bucks. Thanks to our friends over at Game Time. That is an awesome deal that you just can't beat. And right now, you can also check out Toggle on All In Pricing so you can get an idea of you know, everything without being hit by surprise fees by the time you get to the end. You can even see views from your seats before you purchase the tickets as well. So take all the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time today. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the promo code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off of your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code L O C K E D O N N F L for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? It's Game Time. All right, everybody, continuing on with this crossover Thursday, Locked on Broncos, Locked on Saints, here to break down Thursday night football. So later on tonight, these two teams will uh, will, will be battling. But, man, there's going to be some big-name absences on both of these defenses for this game. Sarah, why don't you kick us off? What's going on over there in Denver when it comes to that defense? Big loss over there. Yeah, it's really big. It's the biggest. Uh, Pat Sertan, the team's best player, will not be playing in this game against the New Orleans Saints. He was ruled out on Wednesday with a concussion, which is what we all expected after he went down on the first yeah. defensive play of the game against the Chargers. Of course, very, very difficult for guys not just to get back on the field initially after you have concussion symptoms, but if you've been diagnosed with a concussion, nearly impossible to play on the quick turnaround of Thursday night football. So for any mm -hmm. Broncos or Saints fans wondering about that, Pat Sertan sounds like he's doing well otherwise though ross which is great news hopefully he'll be back for week eight but no pats or tan in this game so it is the riley moss show in terms of cornerback oh boy one for the Denver Broncos this week. Very exciting season from him so far, but the bummer of Pat Sertan being out, it can't be overstated in terms of the impact on the overall defense. Yeah, yeah. New Orleans Saints fans uh definitely feel your pain uh when it comes to that uh Chris Olave very similar situation second play of the game uh second second offensive snap of the game I should say for the Saints he goes out with a concussion he obviously was not able to make that turn around into Thursday like you mentioned very hard to make they'll get the extra long buy which is nice so hopefully be back the following week but yeah very similar situation uh here so uh, the Saints are dealing with something like this over on uh, listen injury wise like this team is battered they're broken like it just kind of is what it is they're down their two top two wide receivers they're down a bunch of players over on their offensive side but even on their defensive side like being without starting linebacker Pete Werner uh Will Harris their starting safety he was put on injured reserve before last week's game and then now there's a chance that they also don't have defensive tackle Colin Saunders and this team's run defense has struggled so much particularly on the interior so to lose that as well so these are some big impact injuries for the Saints over in their their defensive side too how does with the exception of Riley Moss moving up to the first spot how does that Patrick Sertan um injury or or absence uh, impact what Denver likes to do on defense. 
Well, I think it impacts everybody from the pass rush on back because the Broncos are able to kind of rely on Pat to shut down yeah. his entire side of the field every single snap. And so now you're a little bit less predictable in that way. As as good as Riley Moss has played, I mean, he's top five in, in a lot of major metrics, quarterback rating allowed, yards after the catch allowed. He's played really well. But Pat Sertan is a different beast. I mean, Broncos fans yeah. grew up with I, I grew up with Chant Bailey. And so I, yes. I know uh, Saints great hey, New Orleans Bailey. Saints legend. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Saints legend champ Bailey, still one of the weirdest things I've ever seen. Man, but I, yeah. I mean, he, Pat Sertan, very, very similar guy. And, and so you just can rely on him every single snap. And that's yeah. where I think everything changed against the Chargers. You saw the Broncos go 11 of 13. They allowed the Chargers to convert on third downs. And they they acknowledge after the game, like, yeah, there was this huge dark cloud hanging over us after Pat went down and things like that. So they're going to have to get out of that funk rather quickly because they do have other playmakers in that defensive backfield but i think that that injury certainly immediately really affected everybody else especially in the secondary yeah absolutely i think it's fair to say pat sertan kind of the denver broncos marshawn Lattimore for saints fans that are looking for a comparison there and then and then vice versa marshawn Lattimore has only been targeted 11 times so far this season like it's absolutely nuts wow. what he's been doing um and so like very very similar skill set over there with Patrick. That's why when all the Marshawn Lattimore trade rumors were swirling, everybody was like, get Marshawn to Denver, get him with Sean. But then right. you would have both of those corners. And you know what? We knew he wasn't going nowhere. We knew right, he wasn't right. even here. Okay. So he's been outstanding so far this season. Um, yeah, dude, I think that like for the Saints, the, the impact of the loss, particularly in the second level, has really been uh, the tackling, right? It hasn't really impacted the coverage. Like the Saints' coverage on defense is still there on the secondary side, but the middle of the field and the um, – and the tackling at the catch point, those are the things that have been the big time issues for New Orleans. And I do think that some of these injuries uh, have a big, big, have played a big role in it. Pete Werner, one of the team's more kind of solid tacklers, Will Harris, an absolute thumper. Having both of those guys out, it has led to, uh, or it has helped to contribute to. I think it's a bigger issue as a whole, but it has helped to contribute to uh, the Saints right now, giving up 1,018 yards after catch so far this season, the most in the NFL. Uh, they've they're tied for the ninth most missed tackles and ninth most missed tackle per game rates as well. Uh, it, it has been a big issue for them, and so when you have the opportunity to get some solid tacklers out there to kind of help you with that, you'd love to see that. But neither of those guys. Uh, obviously going to be back for Will Harris in terms of him being on injured reserve, uh, but still not getting Pete Werner back who uh, he and Colin Saunders suffering injuries during the week. I'm not talking about in game injuries. They're like, these are injuries that are happening either away from the facility at the facility, whatever you at, but like, these are like probably practice injuries. And so that's the other part that's so disappointing about the same sort of injury track record so far this season. That's kind of when it rains, it pours, right? I yeah, mean, you're already dealing with a bunch of stuff and then all these other guys start popping up. And I think it's I think it's interesting that you bring up the tackling stuff and the after the catch stuff for the Saints defense, because I mean, the Broncos have not had any sort of yak game. I mean, we're, mm. we're talking about the majority of their explosive plays are kind of those deep downfield targets. You know, a, a couple of contested catch situations here, uh, a couple of big runs here and there. But I mean, when you think back to the start of the season, I mean, I can't really recall a ton of opportunities that the Broncos have had where somebody catches the ball in space and breaks a couple tackles or makes a, mm -hmm. a few guys miss. Like I think little Jordan Humphrey, another saints legend has one of the best plays after the catch this season. Yeah, the that's right. <laughs> so it's, it's really been tough sledding like for this Denver offense. If they could, if they could get some yak going, we might see better than what they are, which is 20 out of 80 on the season in terms of, third down conversions Ooh, offensively yeah. that no yak has really contributed heavily to that storyline going into this game. Yeah. That's going to be big because the saints have given up so much of that, right? So far this year. So we'll see if maybe they give it to Denver or maybe that helps the saints, maybe put a lid on it. They've been really focused on tackling this week in practices, things like that. Uh, so we'll see which way uh, this one goes for sure. But it, it's, it, 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 this one sounds like it's going to come down to, these young quarterbacks just kind of taking what the defenses give them. Uh, and then hopefully, uh, you know, these defenses being able to do their job in terms of getting some stops, uh, particularly over on the state side. I'm just speaking for me, man. I'm speaking for me. Uh, but, you know, I'm sure you want the same thing over on your side, too. <laughs> 
A hundred percent. After that Chargers game, I mean, we're watching every single Chargers offensive skill player go for big yardage after the catch. And right. that was the first time we've seen that this season for Denver. So it was really a huge disappointment. We've been able to lean on that defense every single week to, you know, get the offense a couple of extra possessions or steal, you know, steal a turnover after a, a long drive here. And, and it just yeah. didn't happen against the Chargers. And so that's that is something that's been concerning. I mean, even dating back to week one against Seattle and and on, the Broncos have been susceptible to giving up big plays defensively, mm -hmm. and especially so when it comes to penalties. I mean, they they've got to lead the league in pass interference penalties. I know Vance Joseph wants those guys to be aggressive, but man, they get handsy out there. So we'll see how that affects you know Spencer Rattler. Is he going to take some shots downfield and just I kind of hope. I mean, throw up some YOLO balls and see if the Broncos will interfere <laughs> with it. Yeah, um, so funny you should say that, man, because I think every Saints fan is going, is he talking about Paulson Adebo in the New Orleans Saints defense? Because, like, same things happened uh, here in New Orleans. Actually, we're, we're going to dive into that here in just a sec, because really this is going to come down to pressure. Will it create diamonds or will it create mistakes for both of these teams? Let's break it down here as we wrap up this Crossover Thursday edition here on the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. And today's episode brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel, who right now have the Denver Broncos favored in this matchup. Two and a half point uh, favorites coming here to New Orleans. And uh, look, I think uh, Vegas, I think Vegas might be underplaying both these teams a little bit. They ain't given enough credit just yet for the young guys that are going to be out there. The uh, point total for this game is set at 36 and a half points, 36 and a half, maybe Maybe that's it. Maybe it ends up being sort of that 20 to 16 kind of matchup, 20 to 17 kind of matchup or something like that. But uh, maybe you're thinking that this was going to pop up uh, or pop off for a little bit more. Uh, you can definitely get in on all that over at FanDuel. So go check them out today. And it's especially excited if you're a new customer because new customers are going to get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. Get a hunch during the game where you can check out stats, live play-by-play, -play, and so much more in the same window same page where you place your bets as well so once again 200 dollars in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first five dollar bet you can find it today over at fanduel.com all right buddy we're taking a look at this denver broncos at new orleans saints matchup here on this crossover thursday which is brought to you by our friends over at prize picks go and check them out today you can download the prize picks app use promo code Locked on NFL in all lowercase. That way you get uh, $50 instantly when you play your first $5 lineup. Take a look at what it's going to take for each of these teams to uh, come away with a big win. And Sarah, I think you and I are on the same page for the kind of first thing here, which is all about pressure and trying to get that pressure on these young quarterbacks. Absolutely. You want to make the young quarterback's life miserable, right? And if you're the Denver Broncos, that's the number one thing you got to do to win. Make Spencer Rattler's life miserable. I was telling Cody on an earlier episode of Lockdown Broncos this week, Ross, it's like, remember the Titans when he's like, you want them to remember the name he played the Denver Broncos. You want Spencer Rattler to remember when he played the Denver Broncos. So, I, I mean, that's exactly what it's going to be for this Denver defense is going to New Orleans. Hey, you quiet the crowd with a few sacks in a row you know get a couple three and outs mm -hmm. early in this game the denver defensive front it sounds like ross it may be one of the only totally healthy units out of either team in this game and those yeah. guys are awesome like they are so much fun to watch dj jones on the very middle of it john franklin meyer zach allen jonathan cooper nick benito these guys are all playing at a very high level this season and that is going to be the number one key for victory in this game for the broncos yeah, I think the Saints are going to be looking for the same thing, right? Try to make try to make them remember the New Orleans Saints name. You know, it's going to be the same thing for them, man, because they've got two guys in particular, Chase Young, as well as Carl Granderson, each of which have more than 20 pressures, according to the next-gen stats, uh, on the season. One of the few kind of teammate tandems to get that done outside of, of course, that phenomenal tandem of Danell Hunter and Will Anderson Jr. Like, what'd you have to do to luck into that? You know what I mean? Yeah. But... <laughs> it is what it is. Uh, yeah. And so the Saints are, are, are going to be looking to maybe get those guys after Bo Nix, if at all possible, or as much as possible. But I think they're going to need 
a little bit of help from their defensive interior as well. Get that pressure up the middle so that you're able to maybe flush him into that pressure coming around the edge, or at least have that quickest point A to point B straight line right up the middle in his face to at least get the timing off. You know, everybody here is very familiar with the Sean Payton offense and how important timing can be in certain game situations. This is a situation where you want to do that and not allow Bo Nix to become that Oregon University improviser that he was so good at being in those situations when plays broke down. The Saints um, not so great with the mobile quarterback or, or or the quarterback that can move around, however it is that you want to define it. So I need to figure out a way to put a lid on that for sure. Yeah, the, and they'll want to do that immediately because I think we're going to see the Broncos come out with tempo, which is what I think yeah. is one of their second key to this game is, hey, Sean Payton, personnel changes. You, we know that, Sean, hey, we know you're a great chess player when it comes to NFL players and matchups and personnel and things like that. Let Bo Nix go out there and start cooking right away. Get some tempo offensively. Get some yard after the catch opportunities. The Broncos huddling, taking the clock down to double zeros at a lot of times, almost one delay every Every game it feels like I mean we get it like Sean he's great at that stuff when the game flow is rolling but the mm -hmm. Broncos have not gotten into a good game flow hardly at all this season only other time was against Tampa Bay really when they started off 14 nothing in that game so get some tempo offensively for Bo Nix and let him you know try to get into a rhythm early on against the Saints defense yeah, absolutely. I think the Saints have struggled with a little bit of that too. When game flow is not perfect and they have a little bit of that pushback, a little bit of adversity, that's when they struggle the most. Uh, I think similar to, to that, the, the next question becomes for Spencer Rattler, who's his go-to guy, right? Who's the guy that steps up in that passing game? Because I'm not sure if the run game is going to be there for the New Orleans Saints. New Orleans Saints run outside the tackles on 72.8% of their rushing attempts. The Denver Broncos have won, have, I think it's the second, have forced the second lowest success rate on outside runs. They have been outstanding defending the run game outside the tackles. That is the New Orleans Saints bread and butter. And if you look at the Philadelphia Eagles loss, the Kansas City Chiefs lost there, as well as last week against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, they were not able to get that run game going. And when they can't get the run game going, They've been struggling a little bit, but you saw a little bit of that resilience pop up in the first half of last week's game. Can the Saints and Spencer Rattler keep that going? He's got to find that right guy uh, in the passing game. So I'm looking at either rookie wide receiver Bub Means, who we referenced earlier. He's just getting more and more opportunity. He's been earning it in practice. He's not just getting it because of injuries, but he's absolutely been earning it. And then tight end Jawan Johnson, number 83, is the other guy that I'm going to be watching in this game because he and Spencer Rattler have a lot of trust for one another. And that's really interesting because they got no time together during training camp. They don't get to work together in practices. So something there works and it definitely worked last week as well. Uh, one of the big, like two of the biggest catches in the game were a link up between those two. The third one that didn't stand because of a penalty was also between those two. So I'm looking at those two guys, 16 bub means 83 for Broncos fans, Juwan Johnson uh, to be the go-to guys for Spencer Rattler in the passing game. And one or both those guys will have to step up because I don't know if the run game is going to be there for them. I can't wait to see how Vance Joseph schemes against Juwan Johnson. I know mm -hmm. the injuries and all those different things are, they make things, you know, oh, it's weird when you don't have Chris yeah. Olave and Rashid Shahid out there, but at the same time, like, are the Broncos going to roll Brandon Jones over there? Are they going to have mm. PJ Locke matching up against him? Are they going to trust Cody Barton against him who got kind of cooked a little bit against the Chargers last week? So what are they going to do there? Is it going to be Jaquan McMillan who's really been good out of the slot? Are they just going to put him on man coverage? I don't know what's going to happen, but that's a fascinating matchup. I think for the last key for the Broncos, though, Ross, it's got to be, can you win third downs? Like I mentioned earlier, mm, Broncos right, right, converting right. third downs at a 25% rate offensively, which is, uh, I mean, uh, pathetic is is one word that comes to it's mind. Disgusting is another. Uh, you got to be better than 25%. My goodness, guys. Come on. The only team that's worse than the Denver Broncos at converting third downs is the Cleveland Browns, who I think just broke a streak Oof. of like 27 or 28 straight uh, third downs that they did not convert. So the Broncos don't want to be in that conversation or in that realm of, of the discussion anymore. You got to convert third downs offensively and got to figure out a way. I mean, like I said, 11 of 18, you allowed to the Chargers. Got to figure out a way to get off the field on third down defensively in this game. Yeah, that was big for New Orleans in their last game as well, which brings me to my final one as well. And I'm going to give you one word for this one. It's a word that head coach Dennis Allen used to describe tackling atrocious. 
That's what he called the tackling efforts of this New Orleans Saints defense. His, by the way, New Orleans Saints defense last week after their game against Tampa Bay Buccaneers, atrocious. Tackle, please. That has to be the, the final thing for the New Orleans Saints. We talked about, or, or, or especially over on the defensive side, we talked about like the Broncos not necessarily being a yak team. Don't turn them into one. You know what I'm saying? So you've got to be able to make those tackles at the catch point, limit the yards after catch, so on and so forth. And it's a little bit about the fundamentals. It's a little bit about don't go for the big hit, get them down to the ground. Don't always go for the ball. Like this, this Saints defense is a big time turnover mentality, Sarah, and sometimes that works against them. Uh, so the Saints have got to be able to address that, get these players to the ground when they have the ball. Tackle, please. That's all that they're looking for on the defensive side. I was watching a little preview of this game with uh, John Gruden, who I know has done some work with the Saints, you know, mm -hmm. recently. And he said, I, I didn't even know I could count that high. You know, I was watching all these missed tackles. <laughs> so I found, I thought that was kind of funny. And I'm, I'm like, man, you guys got to stop bringing this stuff up right before the game, because you know what happens when you start speaking these things out loud is that, well, then they have a great game tackling against the Broncos. I know Broncos fans are like, Shh, let's keep the stats. Let's keep the noise down on those stats there. But yeah, it's going to be one of those, one of those interesting things things it's like you know which one of these rookie quarterbacks ross is going to step up under the lights yeah. like you mentioned for the very first time yeah it's gonna be very interesting yeah i think what you're describing there is that new orleans voodoo by the way to right. where, you know you start putting those start putting those stats out there and all of a sudden the streaks get broken <laughs> <laughs> yeah, jinxy, yeah. Jinx. I love it. Well, Sarah, this has been an absolute blast, man. And this game is going to be an absolute blast. I think it's always so exciting to be able to look at two teams that are in a situation to where they get a chance to see a little bit of their future, but then also have some pretty good positives going for them, have some adversity that they're navigating. It's not all positive. Like we mentioned, it's not going to all be clean in this game, but I think it's always fun to be able to get a look at a team's future. And of course, you got two quarterbacks where everyone's on the extreme. Mm -hmm. Right there with you on that one, buddy. So this is going to be a lot of fun to watch. Sarah Bedger, you can follow him over at Sarah Bedger, all your favorite social media. Check him and Cody Rourke out every single Monday through Friday over at Locked On Broncos. Myself, Ross Jackson with Locked On Saints at Ross Jackson Nola on your favorite social media. Make sure you check back in. Each of us will have uh, our recaps of the games Friday morning. Got you all ready, win or loss, rain or shine, uh, Knicks or Rattler, whatever it ends up being. We're going to break it all down for you, so make sure you come through for that. We appreciate you very much for being here for this fantastic, if I may say so, crossover mm -hmm. episode, Locked on Broncos, Locked on Saints, here as a part of Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day.